Hi everyone, we're back with another accounting video for FAR 1. Today we're going to go through the conversion from cash to accrual accounting. And this is found on pages 116 and 117 in the 16th edition of the Wiley textbook that we use at UF. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to go through basically a sort of structure that you can use, a format, a template, whatever you want to call it, that you can use to walk through each and every single one of these problems. And then we're going to walk through, I think it's exercise 3-18. So this first video will be just the basic concept of what is cash to accrual. And then there'll be a second video of uh, exercise 3-18. So you can look for that one as well. So basically the way we want to look at this is we want to talk about what we're going to do. So the process is that we want to start with cash basis numbers, right? And these are given mm -hmm. in the problem, right? So these numbers would be given. It would say like this company collected X amount of dollars or whatever the case may be, but that number is given. Um, or it could be on the expense side where it would say this company spent a hundred thousand dollars on whatever their operating expenses are. Okay. And the end point is that we want to be on a cruel basis, revenue or expense, depending on if we're doing, um, cash collected or cash paid. Right. And so to get from our start point to our end point, we have to have these reconciling items, which are, you know, our accounts receivable, unearned revenue, prepaid expenses and accrued liabilities. Right. So those are covered on pages 116 and 117 as well. And so, as I say here, we have these reconciling items. We add and subtract the beginning balances. Right. So that this should be our framework. We start with cash. We add, we subtract some numbers and then we get to an end number of accrual basis revenue. So let's just walk through the intuition really quickly of these different um, accounts. So we'll start on the revenue side. It says service revenue in the book, but it really could be any type of revenue. Um, and so again, we start with cash receipts. Okay. And then we subtract beginning accounts receivable. So now we have to think about why each one of these subtract and adds makes sense. So the first one be subtract beginning accounts receivable. Okay. Why are we doing that? Well, we have to think about beginning accounts receivable. What does that represent? That represents revenue that was recorded in a prior period but it's included in the cash receipts of the current period, right? And so what happens is that this accounts receivable was collected in the current period, okay? And it's included up in this number here. It's included in the cash receipts, but we do not want it in the ending accrual-based revenue because that's not revenue of the current period, okay? It was revenue of the prior period, right? So let's just say that our being accounts receivable was like 10 or something like that, and we didn't have anything else in this period, right? We just had accounts receivable of 10 to start the period, but we didn't do anything else. That means that we would have collected that 10, right, this period. So we would have 10 of cash receipts, but that's not actually revenue, right? And if we look at the bottom, our goal is accrual based revenue, right? And so we would have to subtract out that 10, right? So that's why that makes sense to subtract out the 10, to subtract to be an accounts receivable. The next one is ending accounts receivable. We add that, okay? And we have to think about, again, what is ending accounts receivable? Well, ending accounts receivable would represent revenue that was earned in the current period, but it was not yet collected, right? If it's in accounts receivable, we haven't collected it by definition, okay? And so what that means is that we've done something like, you know, debit accounts receivable for a certain amount and credit revenue for a certain amount, right? So maybe it was $10 again or whatever the number is but we've debited accounts receivable, we've credited some sort of revenue, right? But that's not included in this cash receipts, right? Mm -hmm. Just by definition, if it's in accounts receivable, it's not in cash receipts. So that means that we would actually have zero for our cash receipts, right? But we would wanna have 10 in our ending number. So that means we would add 10, okay? The next one, beginning unearned revenue. So if you look in the book, it says to add beginning unearned revenue. So why does that make sense? Well, again, we think about beginning unearned revenue. What does that represent? Well, that would represent money that we collected, right? So we got a cash receipt in a prior period, but we have not yet earned the revenue, right? And so in that case, we would have, when we would have gotten it, we would have done cash for the amount, let's just say it's $5. And then we would have credited unearned revenue for five. Right, but that would have been in the prior period. And then the current period, we would debit unearned revenue and credit service revenue. Right. And so 
there would not be anything in the cash receipts for the current period because we would have recorded the cash in the last period, and but we're recording the revenue now. So if we have nothing in cash receipts, but we want $5, right? If we had $5 of unearned revenue at the beginning, and we haven't recorded any cash receipts, but we definitely want it in accrual-based revenue, we've earned that revenue, we would have to add five, right? Okay. And then finally, on the revenue side, ending, ending unearned revenue, so we have to subtract that. So why does that make sense? That makes sense because if we look here, so now let's pretend that this period we collected $15 of unearned revenue. Okay, so that would be in our ending unearned revenue balance, right? If we had $15 as our ending unearned revenue, we would have debited cash and credited unearned revenue, right? So that means in our cash receipts, we would have 15 right? From that one item, we would only have $15 from the ending unearned revenue. However, that's not revenue, right? Of the current period, that'll be revenue of the next period. And so we would have to subtract that out to zero out the balance there. All right, so that does everything with the revenues. Let's move on to the operating expense side. So again, we're going to start with cash paid for operating expenses, and then we're going to add and subtract. So the first thing is beginning prepaid expenses The is, is added. All right. So the reason that would be added is we have to think about, okay, so our beginning prepaid expense balance would be cash that we've paid in the prior period, right, for a prepaid expense, right? So we would have paid cash in a prior period, but we're recording the expense in the current period, right? And so if our beginning prepaid expense was, you know, $20 or something like that, right, we would have zero dollars, we would have zero up here in cash paid in the current period, right? Because we would have paid it in a prior period. But it is an expense, right? It's an expense. We're trying to get to accrual based expense. So we have to add that because this is an expense of the current period. Next is ending prepaid expense. It says to subtract that. So we can kind of think about that. Uh, we just kind of went through beginning. So it's the flip, right? And that's how all these work, right? So you can notice the pattern. Whatever the beginning one is, the ending one is always the reverse of it. So the ending prepaid expense is subtracted. That's because we're recording cash going out right now, right? So let's say that we did uh, our ending prepaid expenses was like $15, right? That means that we would have had $15 in operating expense, but that's not an actual accrual base expense, right? It would be an accrual base expense when we actually use up the rent or the whatever we prepaid for, right? And so we don't want to record this $15 that we paid out today. We do not want to record that as an expense of the current period. We want to record that in the future. And so we would have to reverse that out, right? So it's already included in operating expense cash paid, but we do not want it to be a cruel base expense, right? So if we did 15 minus 15, we would have zero. Finally, the last two. So subtract beginning accrued liabilities. So beginning crude liability would be something like interest payable or accounts payable or anything like that, right? Any sort of accrued liabilities that we might have. Um, and so those would represent expenses of the prior period, right? So when we made that journal entry, we would, we, would, we'd, we would debit some sort of an expense and then we would credit something like, you know, interest payable or something like that, right? And so we would have recorded the expense in the prior period and then in the current period, what we would do is we would we would debit this interest payable and we would credit cash, right? And so that would actually be a, a cash paid for operating expense, right? So we would have said in this period, debit interest payable, credit cash. And that means that that would be included in this operating expense. Let's say it was $10, okay? So we, we're saying that we're paying out cash of 10, but it's not an expense of the current period. We already recorded the expense in the prior period. So we have to subtract that $10 out. And then finally, the ending accrued liabilities. So that's saying that we're going to accrue this expense, right? We haven't actually paid cash for it yet. So that would be zero, right? We wouldn't have paid cash for it if we've accrued it by definition, okay? And let's say that was $30, right? So let's say we made this journal entry right here. We debit expense. We credit interest payable at the end of the current year for 30, okay? There's no cash involved with that, right? but it is an accrual base expense, right? And we're trying to get to accrual base expense. So we need to add that 30. So I hope that helped. Just as a recap, we wanna start with our cash receipts and we always wanna to try to remember that we're trying to get to accrual basis numbers at the end.